Okay, let's see what he does. Wow, talk about a simple move. Well, I guess that just puts more pressure on me to do a good response. The nice thing is that um, when you total it up, the amount of damage that that did was not huge, all things considered. 1,200 damage is less than two axe thrower hits with the gem tile. And as long as I don't have any more turns like that, and I swing the momentum with this next turn, I think it's going to be okay. But it always gets scary because there's going to come this moment in this game where he just goes completely all in for the crystals and I'm either going to be ready for it or I'm not going to be ready for it. And we'll see when the time comes whether I'm prepared enough. As for this turn, enough of that nonsense with the Axe Thor getting free hits on my crystal. Spy goes in front of the crystal, still has the same map coverage, but now he can't get through to the crystal without spending two moves on um, getting around him. I want to move the heavy here, and the reason the heavy needs to go here is because next turn he can go here, and he can threaten any unit on this square down here, and he can hit the crystals. Now obviously I'm not going to do that this turn, but this is a really dangerous position for the heavy. He's caught in a hard place because if he puts a unit on this power boost tile, I can hit it four times with the heavy, and it will KO all of these units. Actually, I'm not sure if it would KO the shaman. Let's find out that out real quick. Uh, 145, 185. Yeah, there's no way that um, that fourth shot would kill the shaman, but it it will kill the other guys. Um, so that sets me up for that play. I need to get this soldier down to threaten to properly threaten this axe thrower here. And I also need to heal him up because he's so so low. And then I have one AP that it's not really obvious what I want to do with it. But I think the best move is a little bit of a strange move. I think it's actually to move the best move is to move that scout down there. And the reason I think this scout needs to go down there is because it's obnoxious. Because that means that this scout can stomp any unit in this area. And he doesn't have any units in range of the scout right now. Now, if you're familiar with the, the way Hero Academy works, any unit that attacks the scout um, pushes him back opposite of the direction that he was attacked from. So if he wants to make this scout go away, he's going to have to spend at least two AP knocking him back. And that might involve deploying a witch here and then attacking or moving an axe thrower up and attacking and sending him back here or whatever. I don't frankly care how he gets rid of this scout. I just want him to spend nearly half his turn making that scout go away when it provides a lot of offensive utility right now in this position and it only cost me one AP to get there. Efficiency is key in defending crystal rushes and any little thing, any little sacrifice that you can make to get a tempo advantage could be the difference between victory and defeat. Now as for offensive threats for next turn I've really set up a lot of things here. I've got the possibility of the heavy going up to this crystal tile, which is threatening both of these squares. I've got this soldier here, which is threatening both of these squares as well. I've got this spy, which is threatening anything that doesn't have protection that moves forwards, so he's got to stay clumped up. I've got this pyro that 
is threatening the chieftain if he moves anywhere out of this corner. And I've got this spy also protecting the crystals. Now, can he get some trades here? Absolutely. He could trade the axe thrower for the spy. That could absolutely work. Um, but um, I'm willing to accept trades in this situation as long as they're even because he's going to run out of axe throwers very soon. He's only got two left and I've got a good position and as soon as he blows this chieftain that's his last big offensive threat off the board. And so if I can get these three units here I'm going to be in really strong shape. Um, additionally if he wants to try and kill this spy safely he's going to have to burn a tidal wave and tidal waves are absolutely critical in a crystal rush defense because with the, ti with the tidal waves he can spend them as a last ditch effort to get through to my crystals because tribe do not have any units uh, that shoot over my units. So if I just block my crystal with a bunch of bodies, he's never going to be able to get around them unless he uses his tidal waves. But if I force him to spend his tidal waves to kill my units, then let's say he spends a lot of effort killing this crystal. Well, if he's down to one tidal wave left, I can just bunch up around this crystal and um, and it's going to be very difficult for him to be able to uh, to bring it down if there's a clump of units there. So I, this is the best move I can come up with. These moves are always very difficult because there's so many different things that you can do and there's so many different ways to play it and it's really hard to know whether you've picked the right choice. But I don't see any obvious mistakes here um, and this axe thrower is under big threat. I've got about three ways to deal with it next turn. Um, and there's two other big threats on the board as well. Um, we'll see how he chooses to to deal with this, but um, my position, just looking based on where the units are on the board, for the player doing the crystal rush, having this many units out blocking access to the crystal that you need to bring down is a pretty scary thing. Although he does have a lot of material to do it with, but um, it's still going to be difficult. And with that, uh, I think I've done all that I can here. So let's um, we'll see how it turns out.